Hello YouTube, it's Doss Gregor, and welcome back to another Linux First Impressions. Today we will be looking at what OS? What OS? Well, this OS. I know, a little corner, corny, <laughs> a little corny. But when I think of what OS, I think of who's on first. And if you haven't heard of Abbott and Costello's Who's on first? Little skit. You ought to look it up, Google it, look for it. It is quite hilarious as to who's on first and what's on second, etc., etc. Anyway, back to WattOS 7.5. It normally hosts OpenBox as its desktop environment. However, I have downloaded and installed the Mate environment for this particular distribution review. <laughs> it is a very simple operating system, comes very bare bones, will work on older hardware, netbooks, is meant to be as lightweight as possible, comes with next to nothing installed. However, when I first installed it, even though this is 7.5 and I believe 8.0 is coming out soon, I did notice that immediately upon doing so with the Lubuntu Software Center, and if I didn't mention, which I don't think I did, this is a Ubuntu LTS distro based operating system. And as soon as I started it up, of course it said 13.04 was no longer supported, that if I wanted to continue, I needed to go ahead and update to 13.10. That took me from old kernels, such as 3.8 version of the kernels, to 3.11 version of the kernels. It updated everything to the latest repositories, and I crossed my fingers and crossed my toes, and went, oh my goodness, here we go! Because I always hate doing that sort of thing, because 99% of the time, Whenever you do that, at least whenever I do that, especially with Ubuntu, I end up blowing up the system with a major update like that. It had over 700 packages that it wanted to update. And I always think, surely, surely, I know, my name's not Shirley. <laughs> Neither is yours. Surely, that this is going to blow up the OS as soon as I do a reboot. But it did not. Thankfully, it did not. I did not have to start over. As I said, WatchOS is a very lightweight distro. The only thing that I found error out, and I'm not that familiar with Mate to change it, is there used to be over here a network icon, which is, uh, I think, NM-applet, I believe. Now I can run it manually and I can get it to run and if I go into the system preferences and find it I can tell it it's it's checkmarked to run at startup but for some reason it just will not show up and that's sometimes important because right now I'm on my older DV8T laptop and the wireless is very flaky on this so I've got to have those little warnings that pop up said hey you're no longer connected so that I know that something's not working right and that has not come back and I have not gotten it back but for the review I decided to forego looking and trying to figure it out the only other problem that I ran into the installation was very simple however every time I booted the media and I was using a USB stick my mouse would not work it was, I mean, it's working now, and no problem with it. But for some reason, it would get booted all the way in. I could log in with the guest account, and uh, there would be no mouse at all. I'm not sure if that was a bug with my hardware or a bug with my media. But after about the third or fourth attempt, it just suddenly started working, and I've not had a problem since then. So I'm not quite sure what that was about. Partitioning the drive was simple, very straightforward. Installing was quite easy, as I said. No scary parts or confusing questions. It just all went very smoothly. 
Now, another thing about this particular OS being so lightweight is it comes to nearly nothing to use inside, which can be good and can be bad. It's not for someone to install and want to test out Linux for the first time. If you're a seasoned Linux user and you know what you want, this and you and you need something that is lightweight and will go on to some older hardware, whether that's a desktop, a netbook, etc., then this is the type of an OS that you might want to look at if you like Ubuntu. The basics here, it does come with Chromium and it does come with the Ubuntu Software Update Center and Software Center. It has a very um, GNOME 2.x look and feel, which I kind of like because I'm anti 3.x so even though this is mate it feels like you're in gnome you've got all the simple things that you're used to seeing here and the software is quite quite small let me simple packages here as you can see in the accessories very little graphics the internet of course just a few FTP BitTorrent browser dictionary does not come with any type of a desktop office suite as well as it doesn't come with GIMP a lot of things it's like I said yeah bare minimal just what you need to get by in fact you know I should mention that in the sound and video of course it came with audacious GUVC and simple viewer and VLC I had to install myself so that I could test my videos and record and do what I'm doing right now and it did come, of course, with the CD burning software XF Burn. And the system tools, of course, it's using the Kaja uh, file manager system. And just has some basic mate applications as your ter terminal and system monitor. That's it. Plain, simple, easy to go. It has been very quick on the system this week. It has run very well. I've had no complaints, especially since I was able to update all the software and it had a lot of updates and it didn't crash. I can't tell you how many times I've put an operating system on here and it might have a few updates, it might have a lot of updates, but afterwards you go to reboot and guess what? You're either getting a kernel panic, you get into it and half the software's hosed. I had one that the graphics system was so screwed up that I was getting artifacts all over the screen, it was so bad. and that doesn't happen often but sometimes it does so it is good to know that even after a large update such as this it still ran very well now also just to mention you say well I've got so little well how do I get it well if you're a seasoned Linux user you'd know that you can either use the apt-get at the command line interface to install software or if you go into system and administration you should be able to go into the synaptics package manager and because it has all of the repositories that Ubuntu has you should be able to find just about any software that you'd like to install click on it ask it to install it get all the dependencies and have it there so you can have the GIMP you can have LibreOffice you can have Calibre whatever it is and that brings me to another thing the Watt OS website does have an IRC channel. There is no IRC software on here, but with Synaptic Package Manager, you can install XChat or IIRC or your favorite IRC program altogether. So they do have a place that you can go to ask for help. Their website is updated constantly, and they are coming out with 8.0 pretty soon. It's, it's just about ready for release from what I could read everything about it seems to be pretty good so if you're looking for lightweight you like Ubuntu check out what OS and see if that's what will work best on your hardware if you're not looking for a Ubuntu but you're still looking for a lightweight uh, distro I would also suggest that you consider the Debian distro that I've used a lot which I really like that's lightweight too which is Antix, A-N-T-I, capital X. I've had very good luck with that as well. Very similar to this. Works very good out of the box. But Debian-based instead of Ubuntu-based. Well, thank you all for watching. 
I hope you enjoyed this small distro review. Whether it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having, I hope you enjoy it, and we'll talk to you later for next week's Gen 2 First Impressions. Bye, guys.